summer and fall of Minnesota and North Minnesota. You can't do it in the winter. Everywhere this year must have been like the year that uh, they decided to do everything around my neighborhood because <laughs> they got these road crews just orange coned everywhere. But they do do a good job. I mean, they don't waste no time. Most of it's Anderson Brothers. They got another company, Borden Excavating. They got, they come in, they get a job, they get a job, they get the job. And, and unlike a lot of the states I used to live in, in my lifetime, they come in and they get it done. There ain't no lollygagging around, do a little bit today, do a little bit tomorrow, take a week off, do a little bit next month. That's what I'm I'm used to, but not since I've moved here 20 years plus ago, however long it's been. It's been my uh, experience. They come in, they get a job, and they just start tearing tearing shit up and laying blacktop down. They do not lollygag. So when you see something like this. You know where you have a pilot car leading the cars through and stuff like that blocking off the roads and things like that I keep going the same way even if I have to go every day because it isn't gonna be long and it's gonna be completed they finish it they don't leave till the job's done let's just put it that way I really love that about I, I, I can't say this state in particular but I really love that about the area that I live in a lot although we are getting a tremendous amount of people moving here I've never experienced anything well I, I was gonna say I never experienced anything like it but that wouldn't be true I used to to live in Vegas and when I first moved to Vegas it was like 450,000 population what is it now? 450 million? <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, it'll get back down there when they uh, run out of water at Lake Mead. Yeah, it's Anderson Brothers doing this job. In fact, Anderson Brothers is the outfit that I... I don't think they do it anymore. In fact, I... If they do, they probably charge a lot more than I paid. But they were uh, a, a big part of... The crew I used to... Uh, clear some of my land and put in my driveway. I think I missed my calling. This, I would have loved to operate heavy equipment like this. You know, guy, look, everyone's on their iPhone. It must be break time. Everyone's sitting in these wonderful machines. Just outstanding awesomeness. Look at that bulldozer. On their iPhone, checking uh, North Country uh, YouTube videos. Well, they could be. Candy is uh, really busy canning. This is the time of year she just. She puts away a lot of food for the winter. That's that's actually how we uh, eat. <laughs> Not from the grocery store, although, you know, 
not saying completely, but most of our uh, food intake is from her hard work in the fall. I'm coming over to uh, Cross Lake, Minnesota. I had to get out of the house. I guess I could have went fishing, but it kind of somehow felt like work today. So I'm going to do a little shopping at some secondhand stores and uh, check out the uh, dam here in Cross Lake. See if anybody's catching any fish. And then I might come back and do some uh, dam fishing. It's been a while since I've done that and I, I kind of enjoy putting on my waders and fishing that way. It seems like I enjoy it more the older I get. I don't know why. It seems easier, I guess. So I'm going to stop here at Goodwill and see if they got any fishing tackle. Okay, I'm at the, uh, the dam. What did I get at the store? Hey, before I tell you that, look at that ski nautique. Looks like a uh, converted... Mini bus or something, yeah. I'm just pulling, that's pretty badass. Look at the tires on that uh, ski nautique. Those are custom fitted, like a custom trailer. I got to talking to that very nice young young woman about her camper and her ski boat which is very nice and she showed me around it I you know she paid sixty five hundred dollars for it and they're just adventurers they're traveling around and they're here across like I think they're from Duluth or something like that but it's just wonderful wonderful to see she's got the kids and just a great great family I just anyway what was I talking about oh yeah That's what I got uh, shopping. 20 bucks. Wait, 25 bucks. 25 bucks at the secondhand store. Uh, probably a dead guy's shoes, but I don't care. They're comfortable. They're cheap. Lots of fish down there. Let's see them all. Yeah, I think I need to get some waders on and get out here. There's a fisherman there. Looks like he's catching crayfish. Mud bugging, I guess they call it. There's a perch, a sunfish, some bluegill. What I haven't really done is come up here when it's this shallow. This time of year it gets a lot more shallow. If you look back at some of the other damn videos I've done fishing here, I've almost chest deep in water here. I could just use hip waders. And what I would do at this time of year, maybe I'll do that for a video, is I would walk down the river here and just kind of fish as I go with a little fish basket attached to me you can actually see I can I don't know if this camera will pick it up but I actually see some pretty doggone big fish in and around going through there heck maybe I'll go change nah probably not today Remember I came out and showed you all these new docks? There's a bunch of kayakers out here. I should bring my kayak up here, do some fishing. Nice beach area, although it is a Wednesday, so there's nobody 
nobody there right now but a bunch of kayakers a bunch of fishermen water is just as crystal clear as it can be as usual a little weedy though which is normal this time of uh, year in August Lots of bike riders. I think the reason that I like it here so much is it, everybody that's here, even though we're a really big growing community, is, is generally from somewhere else. And they're visit, you know, tourists, whatever. And they do tourist stuff like the kids ride bikes catch crawdads things like that it reminds me of my youth because they don't do that anymore do they unless they're on vacation or we're tired Whenever I do my winter videos of snow plowing the driveway or whatever, I always get comment section of how can you live there? How could you possibly live there? It's so cold, so miserable. Well, it's right outside my back door. This is how. Okay, playtime's over, shopping's over. Time to go get some yard work done. Okay, here's a bridge that comes down to Harvey Drake Landing. This is uh, also Pine River. I haven't been down here yet this year. And it's the end of August. <laughs> Tells you how busy I've been. But I, I used to like to come down here quite a bit. When the river's high, I kayaked down this river one time. Let's go have a look. Long as we're going by, let's have a look. Ding, 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 ding. Now this is still, this is still part of the river that we were just at up at uh, Cross Lake at the dam. This is the same river that feeds off of that A little fishing area here. I actually caught a lot of fish in here, although it doesn't look like uh, it's been fished lately. There's a bunch of weeds in there now. It might be kind of hard to reel in your catch. It kind of looks like a little oil slick there or something, too. Probably not oil, though. It's a good place to launch your canoe or kayak. I'm not so sure about this time of year, though. You might have to portage quite a bit. piece of driftwood chewed up by the beaver it is uh, picturesque to say the least this would be nice to uh, put your waders on and just walk out there and just fish. 
You know, just keep walking, keep walking, keep walking. Because people don't know it, or people that live here know it, but a lot of people don't know it that there's a lot of fish even in the shallow water like this. Because some places there's some deep, deep pockets, and that's where you want to fish. You want to fish in those little deep pockets. Froggy. Well, when there's no traffic coming by, it is quiet. There's nobody around. There's nobody here! All right then, where was I? Oh yeah, I was headed back to the, to the farm. Okay, before we go, you know, we're speaking of camping and stuff like that. Camping, overnight camping, fires or campfires are allowed on public lands in designated areas only and on private land only with the permission of the landowner. Okay, doubt you're going to get that around here unless you know them. Hey, you know, I'm Joe Schmo from Minneapolis, St. Paul. Can I pitch a tent on your backyard? Yeah, nah, I don't think so. Well, you're a bad person, I know. Anyway, it says the river is part of this wild scenic river system. And it, it, it spells it out there. There's actually a lot of free camping around here. They don't tell you a lot about it because, you know, it attracts a lot of homeless people encampments and things like that so it's you kind of have to like learn where it's okay to boondock and things like that there minnesotans in in the area are very protective people very protective of even land that they don't own i realize that for example there's a lot of times there's a long winding road that goes down to a public access. A lot of the homeowners will take the public access the signs down off the main road so people can't find it. <laughs> it's true, they do. I don't know. I don't think I could ever do anything like that. In fact, I, I wouldn't do anything like that, but there's a, you know, people that are born and raised here, they don't like all the growth. They don't like I've been here for going on 20 years now, and I still am considered an outsider to most of the people. Born and raised here, they're... I'm not obviously speaking for all of them, but there's... I would say more than 50% of them just do not like outsiders like myself coming in and fishing, unless they're tourists and don't actually live here type of thing. They, I think they, they like the money that it brings to the area, but not so much the <sighs> noise and the litter and things that go with rapid growth of a community. So I, I get that. Okay, I have been cutting grass. Or I, one time, I should say. I cut grass with this tractor, and I really liked it a lot. Now, it's an old tractor, it leaks oil. Yeah, I guess you'd expect, you know, from a tractor that's 70 years old plus, probably, 70, 1940s or 50s. So, I'm not gonna fix anything. 
I'm just going to keep putting oil in it. Because <laughs> I think it's this bottom gasket here, this seal down here where the oil pan is that leaks. I don't know if you can hear me or not, but anyway, it, yeah. I'm going to keep cutting grass with it for now because my regular riding lawnmower has issues. So I got it in the nick of time, let's just say. This. Remember when I bought this tractor, the guy said it was missing a this? I don't know what this is. I guess I could look it up, but I forgot and I don't feel like looking it up, but it's this thing. I got it on Amazon. <laughs> I looked it up on Amazon. It was 29 bucks. So I, I can, it, you know, rain, you don't want rain to get down in here. It, it milks up your oil. So yeah, 29 bucks, I got that. So the gas is on, the battery's connected. Now here's the choke. I haven't had to choke it yet. It starts every every time. I you know I like driving it around. I, I drove it down the street twice now. So let's see if it fires right back up again without choking it. Neutral. I like that. Let's cut a little grass, shall we? Now this is the throttle here. This lever here raises and lowers the mower deck. That lever there starts the blade rotation after you pull the clutch out. Can you hear me? It grinds through the gears. Not all the time, but most of the time so far. I'm just not used to it yet, I don't think.
Anyway, it's pouring. It does a great job. That old tractor does a better job than my rider, my John Deere riding mower. And it does it a lot faster because it has a bigger mower deck. I think it's a 62 inch mower deck that's on there. But yeah, you make short, short work of cutting grass with that tractor as uh, a great purchase. So I'll check you guys on the next one. See you later.